Hello everyone and welcome to a video that's been requested uh, quite a lot, surprisingly. Um, it's been requested by some people loads and then other people just once or twice, but nevertheless, there's been a lot of requests. So, this is going to be a What's In My Dock video, and I thought this would be a brilliant time to do one also, because it ties in with my Power PC Promise series of videos that I'm going to be running very soon. Because this will show you all of the apps that I use daily on my Intel Mac. Um, so then, when I start using my G4, you'll be able to see the comparison and apps that I have to use instead. Now, I'm recording this with uh, the QuickTime screen recording thingy, just because it's a little bit more convenient than ScreenFlow at this moment in time for me. And, um, yeah, I hope that all goes well. Sorry for the audio quality, everyone. I am recording with an original Firewire EyeSight camera. Um, it's a really good camera for the age, but for some reason, I find the audio is a little bit... Um, I used to think it was really good, but now I just, uh, I don't know, it just doesn't sound the greatest to me. But anyway, for those of you who don't know me and who have never seen my channel before, sorry about all the rambling. I hope you enjoy the video. Um, just to let you know, I'm running on a Mac Pro 2008. Uh, that's an 8-core machine. I've got 8 gigs of RAM, 2.8 gigahertz. Uh, that's pretty much it. So, let's move on to the what's in my dock video. So I've got, I'm running a dual display setup at the moment, but I'm only recording one, so, you know, it might get a little bit confusing. But anyway, um, here's my dock. I have it on the left. And first off, we have the Finder. Oh, by the way, I'd just like to mention, <laughs> before we start off with the dock, I know I keep sidetracking. I thought in the, um, in the whole excitement of upgrading to Mountain Lion, because I'm still running Lion, um, I thought I'd celebrate by applying the Tiger background. Because this Tiger background is very special to me because, well, Tiger was the first Mac operating system I used on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, because when I got my MacBook in 2007, that's what the operating system was. So Tiger is uh, very familiar to me and I kind of like to uh, think about going back to my roots when uh, the new OS comes out. But anyway, weird stuff over. Let's jump straight into it. First, we have the Finder. Now, within Finder in uh, Mountain Lion, in Lion, sorry... I like to apply this bottom bar in the Finder window. Um, it isn't applied by default anymore, but I just like it because I've always had it there and I'm kind of used to it. And I do like to see sort of, you know, what everything's taking up, like space-wise. It's pretty handy, I don't know, but I, d I just, I may, I may put it back to the default when I upgrade to Mountain Lion. I don't know, I just, I just struggle with change. Um, I also struggled with the fact that they switched around the order of the disks and the folders. That got quite confusing to me. But anyway, the Finder is still a very nice uh, and easy way to navigate your files. iCal, fantastic application. Don't know where I'd be without it. I look at it every single day. Um, I'm not brilliant at remembering to update it, but hey, I try my best. Um, Google Chrome, this is my primary internet browser. Surprisingly... Um, I do prefer it over Safari because I used to be a die-hard Safari fan. Ugh, excuse me. I used to be a die-hard Safari, Safari fan, but um, lately I've been on Chrome, maybe for the last three months, two months maybe, and man, Chrome is just such a solid browser. I love it. Um, next up we have Safari. Safari is my secondary browser. Um, I really don't often jump into it and to be perfectly honest with you it doesn't really need to be taking up space in my dock next up we have mail uh mail is a fantastic client it's really really good it comes on every mac of course and it's just it's just top quality um it's probably my most used application that and google chrome um mail is just a solid way to manage your email twitter um fantastic twitter app i used to use twirl that was my preferred uh, Twitter client, but now I just use Twitter and I think a lot of people just simply use Twitter on the Mac It's a very good solid simple reliable stable application and it just gets the job done Next we have iChat. It's my chat client of choice It's a pretty pretty neat and nifty chat client um, iTunes Sorry, everyone, I've just gone into a little bit of brain meltdown. <laughs> iTunes is an absolute godsend. I use it every single day. I absolutely love it. I use it to manage my music, audio books, TV shows, films, applications. I just absolutely love it. Spotify. I don't really like Spotify. I'm not a Spotify person, but I use it to 
look stuff up before I download it. Uh, Audio Hijack Pro, very clever application. It allows you to pretty much record um, record system audio from any application. So you can hijack Spotify and essentially if there's a track on Spotify that um, you can only find on Spotify, then you can just record it with this app. It's pretty damn sweet. Um, of course, you know, that's not advisable, but it's very handy for other things as well. Recording application audio can come in handy. SoundCloud, just a little desktop ac application extension of the website. Don't use it a lot, but I really like it. And also I like it because it's orange and it shows up nicely in my dock. <laughs> uh, Meta Z, I used to use MetaX. This is the newer version. It basically allows you to get metadata for all of your films and TV shows. So you drag your file into here, then you can search it here on the database and all the information comes up here. And then you can write the file directly and then import it into iTunes. Very, very handy. And it makes your film collection look extremely organized. Um, if I go over to my films, you can just see, I know it's loading them, and any embarrassing films, they're not mine, Leah's got a few of her favourite films on here as well, but you can see it gets all of the descriptions and everything for your films, all of the metadata, so a lot of these are just DVDs that I've imported, but um, I've been able to grab the data using that application, so it's very handy, and that is not a good film. Okay, next we have Final Cut Express, my primary video editor for YouTube. I absolutely love this program. I actually own it own it legitimately. I have the box. I had it years ago. I've owned this application now for probably close to five years. Um, it's absolutely crazy. The time just absolutely flies. Um, great solid application. Really glad it still works under Lion. I hope it works under Mountain Lion. Final Cut Pro 10. I have it because I've been experimenting with it. I've heard a lot of good things. I've heard a lot of bad things. From my particular standpoint, I'm not a professional video editor, but I'm by no means in the iMovie standards. Um, it really isn't for me at this moment in time, but hey, I'm still used to the traditional methods of Final Cut Pro 7 and Final Cut Express. I run Final Cut Pro 7 on my MacBook Pro, by the way, um, but Final Cut Pro 10 is like, it's a little bit like iMovie, iMovie Pro, but there is some fantastic things in Final Cut Pro 10, and it looks really good as well. The quality is absolutely outstanding. Uh, Visual Hub. This is an ancient application. Um, where is it? Oh, there it is. It hasn't been properly updated since about 2007, and I used it right back in the day. Um, they had another application that was similar to this called iSquint. Uh, Visual Hub was pretty much the sort of slightly better version. When Lion came out, Visual Hub broke, but then a couple of months later, um, they released an update, a quick update, and it was so funny because they're not updating this application anymore, but it was just a Lion fix to get this Visual Hub application running on Lion. I hope it runs on Mountain Lion because it's a fantastic application. Don't know where I'd be without it. Um, of course, you can get higher quality conversion applications now, but Visual Hub has always been the one for me. It's fantastic. Just look at it. It's blinking gorgeous. Um... Handbrake, brilliant for ripping DVDs. I can't stress that enough. Handbrake is a fantastic application. Um, it's really, really good, and I love all the options for audio. Audio options within Handbrake are outstanding. Um, next up, we have MacX DVD Ripper Pro. This is a pro DVD ripping software. I can't remember how much it is. I think it's about $40 or something like that. Um, I'm going to be reviewing this soon, maybe towards the end of August or something, after I've had a long time using it. Um, it's a decent application, very decent. It produces very good looking rips, but I don't know why the interface looks so retro, but it looks like something that runs on Panther or something like that. But it is a very good OS. It is a very good um, application, full of different options. There's tons of options in there. Next up we have iDVD. iDVD is such a godsend. Um, people don't realise it, but iDVD is just top quality. It's a fantastic piece of software that you get free with your Mac. And I use it one hell of a lot. I use it for pretty much all the DVDs I do for clients when I do a video editing project with them. Uh, Toast Titanium, again, brilliant for DVDs. I use iDVD for the menu stuff, Toast Titanium for the more simple stuff. But I also use Toast. I depend on it for quite a few other tasks. Um, such as slightly more in-depth conversions, stuff that involves AVC HD. Um, Toast is just a very hardcore application, and I don't really know where I'd be without it. There is a newer one available, um, 
so I'll maybe check that out, see what's different. But right now, Toast 10 is doing great for me. Uh, disc cover. This comes with Toast, and this is not to be sniffed at either. This is a fantastic program because it allows you to uh, write to your discs via LightScribe. And I think that this is probably the best LightScribe application available on the Macintosh platform. Um, especially considering you can also do the other, you know, front, back, you know, D, um, covers of the CD case, but yeah, really, really good application. Uh, EaseCap Capture, this is the software that came with my capture card, really, really not too great, um, it's just bung together really for the Mac, not too impressed, but hey, it kind of captures, so it kind of works, but I'm going to be getting a new capture card soon, because mine just produces not very good looking images. Um, fast as free YouTube downloader, does what it says on the tin, I guess. Um, it's a weird application, you know, it's covered in advertising and stuff, and it's just a little, you know, there's easier ways to do it, but man, this is, I kind of grabbed it, it's been a cool little application, because one day I was struggling with, oh yeah, I grabbed it when I switched to Chrome, um, because I used to use this method in Safari that no longer works probably, but yeah, that's kind of cool. ScreenFlow, um, normally use it, but not using it today, just because QuickTime is so convenient. Rapid Weaver. Rapid Weaver is an awesome little application for making websites. Um, it's sort of somewhere in between iWeb and Dreamweaver. Um, even though Dreamweaver is by far not really a professional application, um, it's still very hard to use for like kind of someone like me that doesn't really know how to make websites. So Rapid Weaver is r a really good space in between. Photoshop. Now, of course, I'm no Photoshop expert at all. But um, I do jump in here quite a lot. I do quite a few different projects, mainly just things to do with covers for CDs or something uh, when it comes to doing uh, video editing work. But yeah, Photoshop, I kind of know my way around it. I'm no expert, but yeah, it's good fun. Image capture. I use this simply for the sole purpose of taking pictures from my iPhone to my computer because I don't use iPhoto. Um, I'd like to use iPhoto, but to be honest with you guys, I'm just not much of a photo boffin, so I kind of just leave them in files in Finder. Uh, text edit. I use this every single day of my life. It's a very good application. Don't know where I'd be without it. Pages, keynote, and numbers. This is iWork09. Leaps and bounds ahead of anything that Microsoft are doing on the Mac. Um, it's just revolutionary, and I don't have a clue why... Uh, people would run Office when this is a much, 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 much better set of applications to use. I do have the newest version of Office installed, and I can quite happily say that it's junk in comparison to iWork. Mac Tracker, fantastic, brilliant database for all of your Mac needs. Um, if you're ever confused about anything, if you ever want to check what kind of RAM that your Mac uses, you can just pretty much find all the info on all the Macs that have ever been. Uh, ooh, and looks like there's a massive update that I need to do later, so that's pretty cool. Um, calculator does what it says on the tin. Very handy. I use it a lot when I'm adding up prices from all different websites, when I'm buying computer parts or when I'm just buying other stuff or I kind of use it to... If I want to buy a load of things, I kind of put all the things on every tab and then add all the prices together and see how much money I need to save up. Uh, transmission. This is a great torrent client. Very simple. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Disk utility. I'm in here a lot, surprisingly. Um, I have a lot of hard disks, so I manage them quite regularly. And disk utility is just a really, really good application to allow me to do that. Um, ah, that's it. I've just got quick time open because I'm screen recording. I've got my downloads folder, my trash, and that's it for my dock. So they're the applications that I use on a daily basis. As you can see, my dock is um, a very big mixture. We've sort of got your, you know, internet kind of part. Then you've got your guy that's really interested in listening to a lot of music part. And then you've got the whole film and video editing and video conversion part that goes on for ages and then you've got a little bit of website stuff photo stuff and then office type stuff and then randoms so yeah it's a nice dock um my dock pretty much never changes these days back when i first got into macs and stuff you know 
just for fun I used to play around in my dock try and match up the colors and everything but these days I just use my dock for productivity um, so yeah that's that um, I've just got this mad sensation to put it down to the bottom of the screen just to see what it looks like there yeah so it's quite a big dock I guess you could say it's pretty nice um, I'm kind of proud of it I like the applications that I use I'm very comfortable with what I use and I'd like to admit that I am extremely nervous to begin using um, my PowerPC Mac for my daily driver, but hey, it's uh, it should be decent. So I'm just rambling now, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's been a what's in my dock. Um, been a really fun one. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.